Hi everyone, I'm Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. I'm so excited to share the new Stamp TV kit, Flowers and Frames. This kit is full of beautiful stamps, cardstock, pattern paper, and dies that will help you create beautiful cards for any occasion. Let me show you what's inside. First, like all of our kits, you get this convenient plastic storage box, and this box will help you keep all of the contents of your kit together so that you can stamp along with me over the next few weeks. Let's start with the cardstock. Let me move these things out of the way. Okay, I love this palette for this cardstock. In this kit, you're going to get three sheets of our powder blue, three sheets of cherry red, three sheets of innocent pink, three sheets of fresh asparagus, three sheets of four sheets of our heavy base weight white four sheets of our black onyx, because you know I love to use black as an accent color, and four sheets of our layering weight white. Now, with this comes this beautiful pattern paper pack, and this one is called Floral Essentials. And let me show you the pretty patterns that are in here. And I always tell everybody, save your cover sheet because you can use that little strip as a little border and these little pieces for other things. So save that. Okay, so there's your cover sheet. Now you're going to get three sheets of this beautiful red. This is a cherry red and fresh asparagus floral print. Then you're going to get this. And this kind of reminds me of lattice work, so I think that's going to look really pretty with your floral cards. So this has got fresh asparagus and then a lighter green in there. This one is a very delicate powder blue and fresh asparagus pattern. Here we have some innocent pink in a pretty pattern. And then we did this one again in the powder blue, which I just love. And this one in the cherry red with fresh asparagus. We have this one in the cherry red and then finally this one in the powder blue. Aren't they beautiful? Now you also get two sets of dies with this particular kit. We've packaged them both in one bag, but there are two separate die sets. These will be sold separately once this kit is retired. Let me show you what these are. These are two flower sets, flowers one and flowers two, and these coordinate with the stamp sets, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So I'll do one at a time here. Let me move this pattern paper out of the way, and we'll do this on a white background so you can see these stamps very easily. Now one thing you're going to notice that's just a little bit different in this kit, usually the stamp sets come packaged in a plastic bag. Well, with the costs going up, we wanted to make sure that we didn't have to raise the price of the Stamp TV kit. So we've eliminated the packaging of the stamp sets to allow you to still get everything that you would normally get in the kit for the same price without the packaging. Okay, so here's the first stamp set, and this is called Frame and Flowers 1. And you can see it's got this beautiful frame and then all these different flowers and greetings to go along with it. And the die set that goes with this one is right here. And you'll be able to cut out these two flowers and these two sets of leaves with this. Okay, the next stamp set, this is called Frame and Flowers 2. Look at this one. This is our first two-step, three-step stamp set. And I'm really excited about this one. It's got these beautiful roses, and you've got the larger rose that will face in one direction, and then the smaller rose that will face in the other direction, so you can create all kinds of beautiful floral bouquets. And then we've got these leaves, and then these backgrounds for the leaves, this gorgeous square frame, and then 
I've heard a lot of compliments on the the font that we used for the greeting, and here's the thank you and happy birthday, two of the most used greetings for your cards. Now, with this particular set, you'll get the flowers too, and this will cut out the large rows and the small rows, and it will cut out this set of leaves. So you'll be stamping this set of leaves on a lighter green with the dark, le uh, dark green veins coming through, or you might want to emboss them, and then you can use this to cut it out. This doesn't cut out this. This one is used for direct stamping right onto your project to create an outline for the leaves. But if you're die cutting it, you don't need that, so you'll just be using this one. It's shaped just a little bit differently. So those two go together. So this is the beautiful Stamp TV kit, the Flowers and Frame Stamp TV kit. Now, I want to show you two add-on die sets that we did this month. These don't come with the kit, but you can purchase them separately, and let me show you what they are. For this one, for this particular stamp, we have this frame. And this frame will cut out this frame, obviously, and then this die, this die will cut out this frame, and this die will cut out the inside, but leave a little bit of a white border, but it's also really nice for cutting out a secondary piece and then popping it up on top, or to cut out a window for shaker cards. So there's all kinds of uses for this die. Plus you'll be able to use this die by itself. You can cut out a piece of heavy base weight white cardstock and then use that as a um, stencil. I'll show you all kinds of ways to do that with this kit. So this is an add-on die set for the uh, frame and flowers two set. The frame and flowers one set also has a frame die set that you can purchase separately and this one will cut out this particular frame and then the circle again will cut out inside and it will go right up to the stitched line which is really neat because then you can still have that stitched line going around and then you can do a different color underneath or you could do a shaker card and pop things up so this is a very useful die set as well now most of the projects that you're going to see me do, you can do with or without these additional dies. You could stamp these frames directly onto your cardstock, which is what I'm going to do tonight in my first project. But if you want to step it up a notch, these die sets go perfectly with this kit. And that takes me to my first project of the new kit. I want to show you, let me get this out of the way. Okay. Oh, and the other thing that comes in this kit is one binder sheet. So you're going to be able to put one set on the front, one set on the back, and then you can lay the index sheet on top to protect both sides when you put them into your binder boxes from sticking to anything else. Now, if you're like me, I like to store my sets that have dies on those magnetic binder sheets where one side is magnet and one side isn't. And those are back in stock now at GinaKDesigns.com. So you can always pick up a pack of them if you would prefer to store your stamps and dies together. Okay, now on to the card project. For this project, I am going to use the flowers from the Frame and Flowers 1 set, and I'm going to use the frame from the Frame and Flowers 2 set. Okay, and you can see mine is well-loved already. It's a little bit stained, but actually that is very, very helpful um, when you're trying to stamp directly onto something to be able to see that, especially if you're using the new Misty tool, which is out. And I'll be doing some videos on that coming up. It's kind of nice to have your dies just have a little hint of color because you can really see where you're laying them onto your piece of cardstock. Now for this card project, I want to show you some cardstock that I'll be using, and these are all in the kit. I'm going to be using a piece of the heavy base weight white to make a four and a quarter by four and a quarter square card. I'm going to use a piece of black onyx and a piece of the innocent pink. And then I'm going to be using an extra piece of white to stamp some flowers and leaves. I have a few acrylic blocks here, and I'm going to be using for ink 
some of the Versamark ink because I'm going to emboss, but I'm also going to use some of the Memento ink because for the flowers, I'm not going to emboss those. I'm going to color those with some of the Spectrum Noir markers. Now the markers I'm going to be using, the colors are the DR4 and the CR6. And these are very, very far apart in color, but wait till you see how beautifully they blend together and they create a color in the mix that has the innocent pink in there. So pretty. I'm also going to use some of our Gina K Designs Fine Detail Black Embossing Powder. And you do want to use fine detail when you're doing these uh, delicate frame cards or these delicate greetings that you're going to see. I'm also going to be using some pop dots. I have both the uh, regular size pop dots. These are the larger ones. And then I have the new small ones. And this is your level one incentive this month. So if you haven't had a chance to try the small ones, you're going to get this in your order if you purchase $25 or more. I'm also going to use an embossing magic pad, a little bit of Sakura glitter. This is the clear star. And then I have this uh, brush. This is just a paint brush to brush any embossing powder away from areas that I don't want it to stick to. Because even though you use the embossing magic pad, sometimes you have a couple little pieces that are stuck. And with a frame quite so delicate, it's very hard to get your finger in there and wipe it away. So a brush will take care of that. Okay, so, and I'll also be using this die set to cut out the flowers and the leaves. Okay, so to begin, I'm going to start by using the embossing magic pad all over the surface of this piece of innocent pink. I think probably some of the reason why everything sticks for me is because I always put lotion on my hands before I do my videos to try to make my skin look younger and consequently I get grease all over the surface of the card. So, okay. Now for these really big stamps, you may not have a block that fits, but fear not. If you have a cuddle bug or any kind of, embo uh, any kind of embossing or die cutting machine, you're going to have a clear plate in there. So I'm just gonna stick the die right to that clear plate and you can see it sticks with no problem and I can still see through it. And this is going to allow me, let me turn it this way because this is the way I want it to stamp. And this will still allow me to see through and to get a good impression. All right. So I'm going to ink this up with Versamark. And if you're inking your stamps for the first time with Versamark, you really need to kind of give it a little bit of extra time to make sure that it's entirely inked up. Clear stamps are wonderful, but they do require a little bit of extra inking the very first time. Okay. So now... I'm going to, excuse my head if it gets in the way, but I really want to make sure that I get this straight. So I'm going to lay this down right here. And then I want to just put pressure right along the image to make sure I transfer all of that Versamark. Okay, there we go. So there's my frame. Now I'm going to take the little piece of extra paper that I have here and some of this fine detail black embossing powder. And I'm going to sprinkle that all over the frame here. Now I am going to emboss something else on this frame later. And you might ask why I don't do it all at once. You know, I kind of like to do little bits at a time when it comes to embossing to make sure that I've got everything straight and that everything's covering well. So there we go. So now that frame, let's put a little bit more right there. That frame is covered with powder. But you see what I was telling you earlier, there might be a couple little bits of embossing powder that stick. You can just brush that off using a brush like that. And if there's something inside, you can do the same. Okay. And I'm just gonna blow away any of the loose excess. And then, oh, do you see that little thing here? See that little thing there? I'm gonna to try to reshape that with my brush. Just get rid of that excess. 
There we go. Okay, now let me put this powder back so I don't melt that too. And then I'm going to emboss this frame. And you'll be able to see it come up nice and shiny. You don't want to overcook it, but just make sure that it's shiny and smooth. And if you're going to mass produce a card like this, you'll notice that the first one takes a lot longer to emboss than the, the next few will. Once the heat gun gets up to temperature, it embosses very quickly. Okay, so you can see now that that's all nice and shiny. Isn't that so pretty? Okay, now my next step is going to be to get a greeting onto this piece. And I want to do that using the thank you greeting from the Flowers One set. That's going to be this one right here. You guys may recognize a similar greeting from our last kit. It was the birthday one, and I got a lot of great feedback on that. Everybody loved that greeting, so we decided to do it in the thank you also. All right, so I'm going to ink that up with Versamark. And you know, one thing I noticed, I was using some old embossing powder that I had in my stamp closet yesterday, and I was having a heck of a time embossing. And then when I opened up my brand new jar, boy, everything just went so much easier. So I wonder if embossing powder expires after a while. I think it might. All right, so now I'm going to stamp that right up in this corner, like that. And then I'm going to add, you can probably see that watermark left behind. I'm going to add a greeting to that, or the embossing powder to that greeting. And again, I'm going to brush away this excess. There we go. Okay. And now I'm going to stamp this. Don't you just love that greeting? It's so pretty. What an elegant thank you card. You really don't even need anything else other than that greeting. And I'm going to show you a sample of one that I did that way, which is perfect if you're making maybe thank you cards from a business or something that you want to be just a little bit less feminine so you don't want any flowers in there. Okay, so now I'm going to emboss that. There we go. And look at how pretty that one looks all shiny. Okay. So, let's get this embossing stuff out of the way, and then we're going to mount this onto a piece of the black onyx cardstock. So, to make sure that's cool enough. And you'll notice too that when you emboss, your cardstock kind of warps just a little bit from the heat. So, just use an, a little bit of extra tape on the back, and then that will take care of that problem, and you'll get it to lay nice and flat. And then this whole panel is going to go on top of this piece of white cardstock. Okay, so now we can put that aside for a minute because we're going to do our flowers. So here's just a regular piece of white layering weight cardstock. It's our Gina K Designs brand. And I'm going to grab these two flowers and these two leaves. These look like fern leaves. I just love them. They're so delicate, too. This is quite a delicate set. Right, and we're going to start by inking up this flower with a little bit of memento ink. I inked myself up. And 
we'll stamp this one. I could really use a Swiffer right now. Okay, and then I'll put this one on the other side here, and we'll ink that one up. I'll stamp that one here. And then I will do the same with these leaves. And actually, I can stamp these both at the same time on one big block. As long as they're spaced out enough, you want to make sure you leave room for the dies to get around the perimeter. Okay. And I'm using Memento Black on these because I want to make sure that it matches the black in the ones that I'm coloring. All right, so there are some leaves. Let's get this out of the way. And now I'm going to start to color. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take that DR4 and I'm going to color just around the outside perimeter with my darker color. Then I'm going to use the lighter one, this is the CR6, and I'm going to color that in the middle. Now you can see a pretty heavy line of demarcation between those. They uh, definitely need to be blended. So now I'm going to take that same light marker and I'm going to start doing a circular motion right along the line between the two colors. I really want to lay down some ink there. Like that. Now I'm going to go back with my darker one and add a little bit more ink while everything's real wet and then finish it up again with the lighter one. You can see that's blended really nicely. And right in the center there, you have some of that innocent pink right in the center. And so you're going to color all of your flower petals that same way. I'm going to color just the big one for you because I want to show you how to die cut these. Even though I'm sure you already know how to die cut, it's still a good idea to just show you how it works with our dies. And you can do whatever you want in the center. You can color those. You can glitter them. I'm going to add some glitter on top with that Sakura pen. And you can see you do not have to be a real big coloring expert to get a nice blend. Just make sure you get it nice and wet. And then what's nice about our cardstock is it does kind of the color kind of pulls on the top just a little bit and allows for much quicker blending. See that? Pretty. Go over the edges. A little bit of dark in there. And back with the light again. Such a pretty look. And you could add a third color in here too if you wanted. If you wanted a real light pink or a real dark red along the outside, you could do that too. And one more. A little bit more of the red. And blend that all together. All right. Okay. So there is my flower. Now I'm going to use the cuddle bug for this. You can use any die cutting machine with our dies. As long as it can cut any thin dies, it will cut our dies as well. So I'm going to start with an A and a B plate. An A and a B plate. And then you're going to just lay that die right on top, and you'll be able to see 
around the edge there. See that? And if you want to, you can tape that down with some washi tape or a little bit of scotch tape on the side. That's just fine if you feel better about that. Or you can kind of just gently, it's kind of hard if I'm not looking directly down. You do want to look directly down on your dies. So if my head's getting in the way, I apologize. Okay, and then gently place the seat plate on top and cut. Okay, so we have one flower ready to go. Now for the leaves, same thing. You just want to lay that down so that all the leaves look like they're about the same distance from the edge. And seat plate down and cut. Let's see how nicely that cut out. And one more. You move that a little bit. Take your time positioning it. There's no need to rush. These are really good things to do also when well, you don't have much mojo and you don't know what to do. Stamp a bunch, cut them out, and they'll be all ready for your cards and you won't have to, to do this part. Okay, so there is one more. And then naturally I would have cut out that other flower as well to assemble my card. So let's assemble this card what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay this out in an interesting way, kind of like that. And then this is going to go right on top. And then I would also add the other flower. Now let me show you the way I would add the glitter. I would take that Sakura pen and just color right along the lines of the flower. Add the little dots in the center, just kind of bounce in there. I'll show you on my finished card what this all looks like. And then you can go right along the black line of the flower to add more sparkle around the entire thing. And I don't know how well that's, yeah, you could see that. See that sparkle in there? Same thing with the leaves. I love the way the Sakura pen looks right on top of the black on the leaves. Just color right over the black and then you get that nice little bit of shine there on the leaves. You can see that. So let me show you my finished card project. Basically what I've done is, and I'll show you all that shimmer there. You see all that shimmer on the flowers and the leaves? Isn't that pretty? And the reason why I wanted all that extra shimmer is because that kind of plays off of the shine in the frame and the thank you greeting. And what I've done here is I've adhered these, this set of leaves using these smaller foam squares. And then I used the bigger foam squares. They're the same depth, the, the same height. So you, you won't have to worry that, you know, some are too low and some are too high. These are actually the same. And I did these two with the bigger ones. So I only needed one in the center of each. And this one I taped right down onto the card project. And that gives it a little bit more dimension. So that is one version of this card. Now let me show you a couple other versions that I did of this same card. Here, instead of stamping the frame directly onto the piece of cardstock, I stamped the frame on a piece of black cardstock and embossed it. And wait till you see how this looks. It looks like wrought iron. It's just so cool. Okay, look at that. And I cut it out with that die. Isn't that cool? See all of that glimmer in there? It just looks like metal. It's so pretty. And that gives it a little bit of a different look. I used the smaller die that comes inside that set, this one. I used that to cut out a piece of white, and I just popped that right on top. 
and then I applied the whole frame using some of the um, the foam squares so everything is just dimensional. So there are two versions of that. And now let me show you one that I did where I didn't use any flowers. Instead, I used gold to emboss, and this is a more masculine version, maybe a more business version. Isn't that one pretty? So that's embossed in gold, and just the thank you. I used the uh, Swiss dot cuddlebug folder on both of these two, and I accented these flowers with a white Ranger gel pen. So there you go. So that's three different versions of this same card that you can make right off the bat when you get your brand new Flowers and Frames Stamp TV kit. The new Flowers and Frames Stamp TV kit, along with the additional die sets and three brand new incentives, are now available at GinaKDesigns.com. And stay tuned to Stamp TV for more Flowers and Frames video projects and techniques. Thanks so much for watching, and happy stamping.